Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a Z-Depth Pass in 3ds Max and then I'm also going to show you how to use that pass in After Effects. So first of all I'm going to set up my render settings here in uh, 3ds Max 2014. So I'm going to go to Assign Renderer and I'm going to change this to V-Ray. Uh, you don't really have to use V-Ray but I'm going to show you how to do it with V-Ray anyway. So we're going to change our output size to HDTV, make sure it's uh, 1920 by 1080. Go to GI, enable that, go to your advanced settings and also enable ambient occlusion. All right, close that for now. And then we're going to set up a very basic scene. So first of all, create a box like that. And then we're just going to create some cylinders. So let's do something like that. And then we're just going to clone a few of these uh, cylinders just something very basic okay next step let's set up a quick v-ray light so go to your lights v-ray v-ray light and let's just create a very simple v-ray light uh, let's just rotate it a bit and maybe rotate a bit like that okay that should be fine and then we want to just go to a view where you can kind of see all the objects in a row, something like that. And then we're going to create a camera from this view. So go to create cameras, create camera from view. All right, then go back into your perspective view and then just uh, go to a kind of side view where you can see your camera and also your geometry or your scene. And then under your camera settings, you want to enable clip manually. And then what you want to do is you want to set your near clip to the beginning of your scene. And you want to set the far clip to the ending or the end uh, part of your, of your scene. So let's just take the far clip and kind of position it there. You can just drag these up and down to position it. And then do the same with your near clip. Um, just try and get that to kind of be at the beginning of your scene, just like that. Okay, once you've set these values, you can disable clip manually because the Z-Depth will actually only use these values. It doesn't matter if it's enabled or disabled here. And then you want to go back into your camera view and then we're going to go to rendering or render setup and just do a quick uh, test render. So click on render. Okay, so the render is looking all right, lighting is looking fine. We can close that. And then in your render setup, you want to go to render elements, click on add, and then go all the way down and you want to add a V-Ray Z-Depth. So click on that, click on OK. And then very importantly, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see Z-Depth use camera clip boundaries. So we want to enable this. And this will then uh, use the settings from the clipping planes to determine the Z depth pass. So let's do another quick test render with that enabled. Okay, so in your render settings here at the top, you can toggle down to V ray Z depth pass. And a good test will be that the closest object to the camera um, needs to be almost completely white or a very light gray and the furthest one should be almost black. So this looks very good. So now we need to render this to an EXR file. So close this down, go to the V-Ray tab, and then you're gonna go to the frame buffer section, and you're gonna enable V-Ray raw image file. Click on the browse button, and then you're gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this render. And then here at the bottom, change this to EXR, click on save, and then click on render. So this will basically um, render a EXR file, which is an image file, but it will actually keep all the different passes um, inside that one file. So you don't need one file for your normal pass, one for your uh, uh, ZDEV pass, etc. You only have one file, you can use that in After Effects, and you can extract all the different uh, passes from that one file, which is actually quite awesome. So after this render, I'm quickly going to jump into After Effects and I'm going to show you guys how to use that file. Okay, so here we are in uh, After Effects. So I'm going to import my EXR file and then I'm just going to drag that into a new comp. 
And as you can see, this is a normal pass. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So just highlight it and press Command D. And let's rename them to make it a bit easier. So the top one, I'm gonna call normal. And the bottom one, I'm gonna call Z depth like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to extract the different passes from the EXR file. So on your Z depth layer, you're gonna add an effect and you're gonna go to 3D channel and then add the extractor effect. And then basically you just click on one of these to open the, uh, the options or the, the settings. And then this will give you all the included uh, passes that you extracted or that you rendered in uh, in 3ds max so here we've got the z uh, depth pass so just change your red green and blue to that alpha doesn't really matter so click on ok and now if i uh, hide my normal pass you will see we've got the z depth pass on that layer okay the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, pre-compose your z depth pass so you're going to right click on that pre-compose and you can call it zdepth comp. Uh, let's move all attributes, click on OK. And then we're gonna uh, enable the normal pass again. Okay, on the normal pass, you're gonna right click, you're gonna go to effect, and you're gonna go to blur and sharpen, and then you're gonna add a camera lens blur effect. Okay, and on this effect, you're gonna, where it says blur map, you're gonna go to layer, and you're gonna select your zdepth comp that you created. And that will basically give you control over the depth of field uh, using the Z depth pass. So you can actually go and hide your Z depth comp because we don't want to see that. And as you can see, um, the foreground is a bit blurred now. And you can see at the back, that's all sharp. So if you expand your blur focal distance, you can actually play with that. So now if you set this in the middle somewhere, um, you will see, well, let's just change the blur radius. Let's just make this 15 so we can actually see what's going on here a little bit better. Um, now you can see that the center is kind of more in focus. Uh, the end or the far side is out of focus and the foreground is also out of focus. So now if we take this up maybe all the way, you'll see that the foreground is in focus and it goes out of focus the further it goes away from the camera, which is pretty awesome. So basically this will give you control over your depth of field in uh, post-production or after your render. And obviously you can uh, render your depth of field straight from 3ds Max, but then obviously you can't change it afterwards. So that's usually not a good way to do this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. And if you wanna see more, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, cheers, bye.